Hi everyone, um, just before I get started, um, I just want to say that the Lord impresses on me to do different things for Him. Sometimes it's to share a dream or a vision. Um, in more recent months, I've been feeling a leading to share a part of my journey and help others in their journey. Um, so, you know, this is not necessarily for those that, uh, those of my brothers and sisters that are mature in the faith. Um, but rather for babes to help them along their journey. Um, you know, sometimes it is a simple message of sharing a dream and the interpretation or um, um, a word of encouragement um, of Jesus' soon return and how close we are. Um, I suppose I, I struggle a little bit when the Lord asks me to do something that's more of a teaching because I understand the enormity of the responsibility of a teacher and I don't take it lightly at all um, you know I work on my salvation with fear and trembling and I am accountable for the words that I speak I do not want to be I don't want to lead anyone astray so um, it takes me some time when the Lord stirs me to do something I have to reflect and I have to pray on it and I have to ask the Lord to direct how he wants me to do that so um, this is not about receiving lots of views this is for someone out there and God knows who it is and it might be for more than one it doesn't matter if this only receives one view it's not a popularity thing this is about being obedient to God and what he's asked me to do and he will lead who it is he wants to see this video so um, on the 17th of July so a month ago the Lord gave me a quick vision and in it I saw the words lead them to righteousness lead them to righteousness now upon waking I had the scripture verse from um, Daniel 12:3, um, which is those that are wise will shine like the brightness of the firmament and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever um, so you know the Lord wants his children to shine we're called to shine in this dark world. We're called to be separate, to be, to 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 walk different from the world. We we separate from the things of the world, and we start begin to walk in holiness. We begin to walk God's way, and it's not through our own strength that we do that, but we do it through the power of God in our lives. Now, as a babe in Christ, when I was a babe in Christ, um, you know, I came to the knowledge of salvation and what Jesus did on the cross for me and of course I, I wept I wept when I had the understanding of what Christ did for me and um, and of course I was repentant for my sins um, you know I had a godly sorrow about all that I'd done to disappoint the Lord and you know um, I wanted to change I wanted my heart to change um, and I wanted to begin to walk God's way. Now that didn't happen overnight. It's not an overnight thing. It takes time. The Lord has to do a work in you. And it actually happens through so many things in our lives. There's trials and tribulations we face. And through each one there's a valuable lesson to be learned. Now I come to learn that each time I faced a trial, God was putting me in the fire for a reason he was putting me through the fire for a reason and that was so that he could teach me he could mold me make me pliable he could make me pliable and then he could teach me something and he could get rid of that dross you know um you know like um the refiner of silver who heats up the silver and then when it cools down, he scrapes off the dross off, dross off the top. And he heats up the silver and he scrapes off the dross again. And gradually, over all that heating up and cooling down and heating up and cooling down, through all the trials of our life, we, we are learning. We're being molded by God 
into the image of Christ. And so eventually, when the refiner looks into that pot of silver that's been heated and cooled, heated and cooled and heated and cooled, and had the dross removed, scraped off the top, he can see his reflection in the mirror, in, in, the, in the silver, the pure silver, with no blemish. So that's what God does to us as he's creating in us a new heart, a clean heart, a pure heart. And he threw me in all sorts of different life situations so that I would look at things from a different perspective. I would understand what people are going through and rather than being judgmental of someone, I could understand what it's like to walk in their shoes. I have stumbled in my own journey and sinned so much, but I've also learned to understand why other people have made those decisions in their life. And I can understand from the sinner's perspective because I am a sinner. And then I approach them with love and I share my testimony to help them on their journey. So that, so that they too can have their life transformed by Christ. Now when I received that message about leading people to righteousness, I looked up the word righteousness. And it says the quality of being morally right or justifiable. Justifiable. Morally right. You know, I was never morally right before Christ. I was, I'm not justifiable in my own strength. There is nothing I could do to make myself justified except by believing in Jesus Christ who came to die for my sins and who washed me clean. Justification came from Him and Him alone. His righteousness you know, I have to make this clear to everyone. That first and foremost, to lead a person to righteousness means I must lead you to Jesus Christ. I must say to you that there is no other way. Jesus is the way, the truth and the light and no one comes to the Father except through him. So you must understand it is Jesus and Jesus alone who will cleanse you of all your unrighteousness, of all your sin. But then you begin a journey with him. Then you allow God not to do a physical circumcision like the religious people did in, in the times of Moses, but to do a spiritual circumcision for him to cut away the, the dirt, the filth, the, the things that are unclean. From your heart he does the work in you don't deny the power of God to change your life and I can't stress enough that you shouldn't rely on man to be your teacher when you accept Jesus as Christ and Savior your Lord and Savior and you ask him into your life when you seriously want to surrender your will for his and follow his way, you know, don't ask for something that you don't want to receive because the Lord will give it to you. And believe you me, it is so worth it. It is so worth it. Because once you surrender your will for his, start following his way, you know, you might be bombarded with battles and trials. But he does such a work in you. Don't deny it. Don't, don't resist the potter molding the clay. Let him mold you. Let him get rid of the yuck. You know, I, I, I'm going to give you one of the examples. I was raised in um, a home where my mother was very clean. Sorry, the sun's just moving. I need to move my chair. Sorry. Um, hope that's a bit better. Yep. 
I was raised in an environment where my mum was very obsessive compulsive and I actually um, learned uh, those traits um, and, and became very obsessed about keeping a clean house and I was very judgmental of those that I didn't think I was <laughs> I didn't think I was but it was in me and God needed to remove that from me and I, I, I would look at someone's home and make an assessment or a judgment on the way the state of their home being a reflection of who they were and um, you know God threw me into some circumstances in my life where my own home got out of control I mean number one I'm a mother of five and trying to keep a clean house with five children is very hard um, you have to start um, you know uh, getting your children involved and everyone involved. We have to work together as a family to keep a house clean. One person can't keep an immaculate house if they're trying to do it on their own. Um, but secondly, um, you know, I had circumstances where my adult daughter had moved out of home. She came back home with two of her children with all of her stuff and we had to move stuff around and make room and the whole house was full with clutter. Um, you know, there was chests of drawers uh, in the lounge room and, and a spare dryer and a fridge in the kitchen and just the enormity of taking care of nine people um, and, and, and living in a small three-bedroom house um, with all that clutter, but trying just to meet the me, the, 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 I suppose, physical and emotional and spiritual needs of all those in the home meant that things were left undone. And my house became very messy and I was struggling to look at my house. I was disgusted at my house and, and I... I felt overwhelmed and I didn't want people to come and see it in that state. Um, you know, I didn't want them to see that it, it had become a mess and that the grounds were overgrown and the weeds were everywhere. And, and you know, um, the Lord had to teach me in that though. He wanted to use my life situation, my current life situation. And I cared more at that time about the well-being of my family. My daughter needed me at that time. And she was going through depression. I was helping with her, with my grandchildren. So I was not only tending to my own children that were still in the house, but to my grandchildren. And I was consumed with being there because of the love of Christ. And I wanted to help them first and foremost. That the state of my house was not important. And the state of, you know, whether my lawns were done or whether I had weeds in my gardens, it, it didn't matter anymore. And rather now I could look at those people whose house was not the way I perceived to, to look right through a different set of eyes. Because God had taken away that judgmental attitude um, and gone, you know what? Rather than thinking, oh, that person's unclean or why do they keep their house like that or why so much clutter or, you know, like making assumptions, he went, what's happening in that person's life that, you know, that is keeping them busy or they're more occupied with or, you know, are they overwhelmed at the moment? Is What are they going through? What are they facing? And so... You know, um, every little thing. I mean, that's just one example. You know, there was also an example of my, you know, daughter being in a relationship with someone who, you know, as a parent, you know, like this person's not right. She's unequally yoked. I don't really want her with him. I want her to leave. And then God changed my heart towards her boyfriend because he said, and well, he showed me that my daughter was the only bit of God in his life and that he was using my daughter to impact him and his family. And, you know, God changed my heart towards understanding how he uses us in the lives of those who are unsaved. Now, that's not saying that I'm condoning seeking um, to be in an unequally yoked a relationship but sometimes we can marry or make choices when we're unsaved and as I have so my husband and I were unsaved when we met 
and through my journey I became saved. And then the Lord placed it in my heart to stay where I am. Because I, you know, a godly wife brings holiness to the marriage. And through me, my husband might be saved. So rather, my Lord has given me a heart of forgiveness for my husband and um, a desire to see him saved and just to love him. And you know, I struggle sometimes, I'm not perfect, but I'm still a work in progress as the Lord teaches me and refines me and circumcises my heart. You know, I didn't, that probably wasn't where I was going to go, but I mean, I just wanted to share those couple of examples to say that these things take, these happen over time and they happen through trials and testing. When you think you're out of control, but God is in control. You might not have control of your circumstances in the, in the trial, but God is. And rather than fretting and worrying and being anxious, be anxious for nothing. Surrender to God. Put your troubles and trials in God's hands and say, Lord, what is it you want me to learn from this? What are you teaching me? And I can't stress enough that God needs to be your teacher. I remember many years ago my friend said to me, you know, she'd recently been born again, and um, she said to me, if, like it was like a just a, a seed that she'd sown, and she said, be careful of religion, and that's really all she needed to say. Effectively, she was saying that don't get caught up in a religion um, and following the laws of man. She placed it in my heart, that seed, Put a desire in my heart to pursue God directly for his wisdom, knowledge and understanding. And um, the Lord uh, placed on my heart to look up a scripture. Just here we go. Um, you know, it's about God being our teacher. And uh, Isaiah, Isaiah 54, 13. All your sons will be taught of the Lord, and the well-being of your sons will be great. Isaiah 48, 17. Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, I am the Lord your God who teaches you to profit, who leads you in the way you should go. Isaiah 28, 26. For his God instructs and teaches him properly. There are many more. There are many more. Isaiah 2, 3. And many people will come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of God of Jacob, that he may teach us concerning his ways, and that we may walk in his paths. For the Lord will go forth from Zion, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. God will be your teacher. He wants to be your teacher. He wants to write his laws on your hearts and minds. And he wants to call you his people. We are the true Jews that have been circumcised by the heart. They had a circumcision of the heart. It's a spiritual circumcision. And in the same way, God spiritually, as you draw near to him, you seek him. You read his word and you let him give you spiritual revelation. He will convict your spirit. He chastens his children and rebukes them. He teaches you the right path. When you're going the wrong way, he'll correct you and bring you back. His spirit will convict you and lead you in the way of righteousness. So when the Lord told me to lead them to righteousness, I have to lead you to Jesus Christ first and foremost. And say, get into his word, pray, seek his face, and let him be your teacher, not man. I know God uses man. He is using people, yes. But be careful of who you listen to. Be wary. Use discernment. Ask God for discernment. 
and say, God, I don't want to be deceived by man. I want to know the truth. I want to find the narrow path that leads to life. Lord, I invite you into my heart to be my teacher, my friend, my counselor. He can be everything to you. He is our husband, the Holy One of Israel. He is so much more. He is not a distant God, but he is alive and he is close and he comes and dwells within. And truly, you can be still and hear his voice. Seek him. Spend time in his presence and let him be your teacher. Let him guide you in his righteousness. Let him change your heart so that you can love like he loves and forgive like he forgives. You can't do that without his power. You cannot. Otherwise you just have a form of godliness with, with, but deny the power of God to change. So I hope that this helps someone out there. I pray the blood of Jesus Christ over this video and I pray that we all come not just to salvation, or sorry, sorry, yes, to salvation. But I, what I want to say is I want people to grow in their faith. Not just to be justified, but to be sanctified as well. And sanctification is a journey as he purifies us. Let the potter mold you. I love you all. God bless and I hope to see you all in heaven.